this place where Alyssa rests. The problem with MSD is that so we're here to talk about gun violence, right? Right. I, I would say that you should direct your anger at the local, state, and federal law enforcement. It's possible if you have the conversation to find the common ground. Alyssa was the heartbeat of our family. She had so much zest for life, so much spunk. She kept us all on our toes. Her soccer skills were outstanding. So the next step for Alyssa was to play in college and to get a soccer scholarship. Actually, the day before she died, on February 13th, she played in her last competitive soccer game. And she was phenomenal. Every single thing that she did during that game was incredible. Her, her passes were on, her, her heading was on, her shooting was on, every single thing. She got into the car after the game and I turned to Alyssa and I said, Alyssa, you know you just played the best game of your life. And she was like, yeah, I know, Mom. <laughs> so what happened was I received a text message saying, shots fired at Stoneman Douglas High School, kids jumping and running towards West Glades Middle School. And the next second, I just had this overwhelmed feeling of loss that something happened to Alyssa. And I was running towards the high school, but there was yellow tape from tree to tree, and, and I couldn't go anywhere past that. I broke through the yellow tape, and I'm just wearing this thin little black tank top. And then I could literally feel him keeping up pace with me. The Marriott Command Center was the designated area where I would hear about what happened to Alyssa. So we went to the command center and I was the first parent there. It wasn't even set up yet because I was, I was always one step ahead of all this because I, Alyssa was with me. Alyssa was pushing me, telling me that she was hurt and telling me she needed help. I was like, I need to get to Alyssa. I need to get to her. Finally, we were called to the room. So my husband and I, we, we go to this room and we sit down with the FBI, and they tell us, we believe that Alyssa is dead. And as a mother, that's just not acceptable. You can't just tell me you believe. This place where Alyssa rests, that is now holy, and will forever be a living monument, a signpost for all of us, to inspire all of us, and direct our path forward. Alyssa, I'm so sorry. As your father, I could not have taken those bullets for you. When Ilan spoke at the memorial service, it was, one of the most powerful words I'd ever heard. They had such an unbelievable love for their daughter, and their daughter for them. And the idea of sending out those butterflies at the memorial ceremony was so poignant in as much as it spoke not only with regards to Alyssa still being with us, but now just in a different state, in a different form. Now she was almost like the butterfly with wings, like an angel flying above us. But it also was a powerful lesson and testament to us of what we are capable of achieving in our lifetimes.
I got up really early in the morning and I drove to the Everglades, which is less than a minute from my house. I went there because I wanted to try to get a closer connection with God to better understand why he took Alyssa. And I sat down and I looked up in the sky and asked God, why Alyssa? Why did you take Alyssa? The next day, I knew that I needed to have a voice to make change. My name is Lori Alhadef, and as of a few minutes ago, I'm a candidate for the Broward County School Board District 4. I'm Lori Alhadef. I want to ensure that the money that the school district spends gets utilized both properly and efficiently. When I do something, I go all out and I do it. There's no halfway in between. As I say in my campaign, I'm up to bat and I'm gonna hit a home run. <laughs> Good luck, thank you. I just can't stop trying to make change, trying to positively affect the school safety in the schools. Thank you. Good to see you. The 347 people clicked on your profile, 72 people clicked on your donation link. So that means you probably did get some donations from that. Right. And then this one, we got like nearly 100 retweets and then 313 mm -hmm. likes. It's just been a remarkable increase in what she's chosen to do. I mean, everything she's done is not by force. Then we got another donation. And a hundred dollars! It's a choice that she's made. Yes. But every one of those choices is motivated, I believe, by her striving to live Alyssa's legacy the best way she can. What each school needs to do is come up with a game plan from security experts. Each school is going to be different. We're looking into different ballistic glass to be able to put in the doors in the schools. If there was ballistic glass in Alyssa's door, Alyssa would be alive today. So I do feel very strongly that the schools need to change that piece of glass and make it bulletproof. I will not stop talking. I am gonna let my voice be my power. Absolutely, this is gonna make change. There's gonna be change in school safety. It's not going away. I lost a child. But if I can be strong enough to do these things that other adults or children can see, well, look, if Lori Alhadef can do it and she lost a child, I can be strong enough to do it too. I'm just a stay-at-home mom. I'm just one person. I do think one voice can make a difference. I think just stepping up to the plate, speaking out, and having that power of your voice can make changes. Two Parkland parents ran for school aboard, Lori Al-Hadef, whose daughter Alyssa was killed in the massacre in Parkland, wins District 4 here, and winning it pretty easily, 65% to 18% for her opponent. We did it!